Welcome to another Office Hours video where I answer questions from my viewers. If you'd like to ask a question, leave it in the comment section below. I read through all of the comments, and if you've ever read the comments on YouTube, you know what that's like. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Steve Huynh, Meta, or Steve and I'm an L7 software engineer. On this channel, we take a structured and engineering approach to your career in life. It's all of the advice I wish someone had given me 17 years ago when I started my career, free of charge. If you've asked a question but didn't get a response from me, head over to my Discord and post a question in the advice forum. The community there is oh, chef's kiss. I've been a bit slow with videos on the channel recently. If you want more from me, sign up for my newsletter at newsletter.alifeengineer.com. I send out an issue once a week, and there's a lot of content there that will likely never make it to the channel. So let's get into it. KCNL asks, I'm in uni and I've been offered a really demanding but rewarding job. I'm afraid I'll crumble under the pressure. What would your advice be? First off, congratulations on your offer. It's tough out there right now. The end of school is really the end of the beginning rather than the beginning of the end. I'll make two points about your question. First is a retrospective point, which is you've already gone through a lot of pressure packed situations. Getting into university is not easy. Performing well enough in all of your courses isn't easy. And getting an offer in today's market is definitely not easy. My point is that you've done it before. There is no reason to think that you won't rise to the occasion again. I would bet, given your question, that you were nervous in other pressure packed moments before the same way that you're nervous now. You discount your past achievements as easy now, but they weren't. It's just that you've had the luxury of time and perspective. The second is a perspective point. Let's step back and examine what pressure is. I define it as having high expectations, being high stakes, and having large consequences for failure. What I'll argue is if you take a broader perspective, many of these things on that list are self-imposed. What I sometimes do is think about the most realistic worst case scenario and then try to make peace with that. For me, the worst case scenario is that they bring you in and then they fire you after three months. In the grand scheme of things, you're young and three months is a blip in your life. You're very employable and you'll land on your feet. You'd have three months of wages and I'd guarantee you'd learn something about yourself. Spend a second thinking about how you'd react in the worst case scenario and if you'd be okay with yourself. Hope that helps. Alejandro R asks, I had two interviews at Amazon, both times got no feedback other than being encouraged to apply again in a year. Is there a reason why they don't give me some tangible feedback? Thanks. The reason companies don't provide tangible feedback is because it's a lose-lose situation for them. It's really not in their best interest. First of all, it takes time to provide meaningful feedback. The interview process already takes many hours, and if it's a high-level interview, it takes many hours from the most productive cohort of people at the company. Providing meaningful feedback means that they'll have to distill all of the feedback and discussions into something that's actionable in a way that won't offend folks. That takes time and effort to do so thoughtfully. It also opens them up legally. Feedback can be used as ammunition for a discrimination lawsuit. There's no upside, so companies don't do it. But that doesn't mean that you can't learn from the experience. What I would recommend is to make sure you personally document all of the questions that you were asked and how you respond to them. Afterwards, try to reverse engineer what the interviewers were looking for and places where you could have done better. If you think that you perform flawlessly, share these with others or places like my Discord to get an objective third-party perspective. What I think you'll find is that with doing a more formal retrospective, you'll identify areas where you could have done better. Take a systematic approach to improving and try again when you can. Thanks for the thoughtful question and hopefully we'll be co-workers soon. Aldrin Sean Pereira asks, what steps can we take to make better career decisions as an intern or entry-level software engineer? I think everybody should, uh, whether they're early or late in their careers, take some time and think about the future. You wanna live in the future for a bit and define what success would look like in one years, five years and 10 years. I think about it similarly to daydreaming about the lottery. In the US, the biggest lotto prize was $2 billion, which actually makes the expected value of a ticket larger than the ticket price. The best part about the lotto though, isn't the prize because you're very unlikely to win. The best part is that you get to start to think about what you would spend the money on. You don't just think about what you do generally, you start thinking concretely about what you would do. Which cars you would buy, what cities your houses would be in, the relatives and friends you would shower with love, and the people you definitely wouldn't give money to. You should think about one year, five years, and 10 years away in the same way as your lotto daydreaming, concretely. Because the reality is you've already won the lotto. There are 8 billion people in the world. You're young, you have an entry-level software development job where people pay you a large salary to program computers. There are billions of people in the world that would give everything they had to be in your position. For you, 
through a lens of work. I think in a year you should target getting your first promotion and a promotion to senior in five years. For 10 years, who knows, that's up to you. When you're making career decisions, reference these targets and make a judgment about whether they are helping or hurting your prospect. It's really easy to get swallowed up in the day to day and lose sight of the big picture. You've got a long career ahead of you, bias your career decisions on the long term. Thanks for the question. Mutual Respects asks, when are you writing a book? I've always wanted to write a book, but I don't have current plans for one. The next best thing is signing up to my newsletter. The newsletter has been great for strengthening my writing. So I'm thinking after I get a year or two of this type of practice, I'll be in a good spot for targeting a book. I think the problem now is that I've got a lot to say, but it's not as organized as it needs to be. And I need a new project like I need another hole in my head. I know there are busy people in the world, but I'm the busiest guy I know in real life. That's not a brag. It's more of an admission of guilt. Once things stabilize and I have more bandwidth, I'll reevaluate. Thanks for the question. Johnny asks, what are your thoughts on ChatGPT? Of course, everybody has to ask about ChatGPT. Well, I think we're in the dial-up internet stages of AI. If you don't know, back in the 90s, to get on the internet, you had to use your phone line. And if your mom picked up the phone and <laughs> he yelled out, mom, and got kicked off. I think my main issue with large language models is that it simulates, oftentimes really well, what it thinks the answer should be. The problem is that it can't really reason. That's kind of a big issue for me. That limits its ability to do high judgment tasks since that requires top-notch reasoning ability. So I wouldn't use them in situations where the consequences were high. I would think about using them as a way to generate a good start. All of this, of course, is caveated by the fact that we're still in early days. Nobody in the dial-up years would have dreamed that we would be streaming video, do all of our shopping, go to school and interact with all of our family and friends all online. Same thing for AI. Thanks for the question. Zerinate asks, what if I'm happy with L5 money? For those of you that don't know, L5 is generally a mid-level software engineer. But dude, if you're happy with L5 money or wherever you're at, congrats, you've won the galactic lottery. Whenever you're happy with what you have, that's a dub. What I will say though, is that life changes really fast. Think about who you were 10 years ago and think about where you are today. Studies have shown that people on average report really large changes to who they are in the past 10 years, but discount the future 10 years. A 30 year old might say that they were a completely different person when they were 20, but when they turn 40, they'll be the same person. But when you ask the 40 year old the same question, they will have completely changed in the same way. When they turn 50, they'll be the same person. Thinking back to my last 10 years in 2013, I was a senior engineer, single. I didn't have any kids or a mortgage or dogs or my YouTube channel. If you're happy where you're at, that's awesome. But make sure you think about what you might want out of the future and bake in some space to change your mind because you will change. XX Crises X asks, how did you get to PE in 15 years? How do you know if there's scope in your team slash org for those higher levels? I'll go over my career journey in a different video because I think there's a lot to say about that. I think your question about how you know whether there's scope on your team for higher levels though is a good one. So I have a couple of answers. The first is that part of your manager's job is to facilitate your career growth. Ultimately, you own your own career growth, so you should be pushing them and it's their job to help. So you should express to your manager that you're targeting the next level and ask them directly if there's scope on the team for that next level growth. There are three possible outcomes. If they answer yes, absolutely, then you're good. Make sure to ask about specific details for expectations at the next level. Now, if they answer no, absolutely not, that's also good in a sense because it's a clear signal that you need to look elsewhere if you wanna get promoted. Most likely, however, is that if there isn't scope for you, they'll deliver that news to you in a different form. Those forms include things like, oh, we're in the middle of this project right now. Check back with me in a couple of months, or we've got a lot of projects next year, or you're too new. I think that you need a little bit more experience. Maybe let's target something for the next year. I always say that you need to meet expectations before you can exceed them. So that when you speak with your manager, make sure to get a signal as to whether you're doing well with regard to your current scope. If you are and you wanna do more, and promotion is a high priority, then don't take those time delay excuses as an answer. I would express clearly and professionally that promotion is important for you and that if the scope doesn't open up for you, that you'll be looking elsewhere. This may be difficult given the macroeconomic environment, but if you work at a large enough company, internal company transfers may still be possible. That's the short answer and I hope that helps. Manchester asks, what advice do you have for onboarding as a senior software engineer versus as a junior engineer? What are things you should do differently and the different expectations? 
When you're a junior engineer, not only are you trying to onboard to a company, but you're also trying to understand how to be a good software engineer. You may have never worked with a product manager before or participated in a daily standup. All of the problems that you see are new to you. When you're a senior engineer, you don't know how the new company works, but you've seen some things. You know how to write software, you understand the software development lifecycle, and a lot of the problems that you face in your new job are similar to the ones that you've seen before. They just have different names and manifest differently. So when you're trying to onboard, I think it makes a lot of sense when you're taking notes to classify unknown terms into whether they're industry terms, company terms, or team level terms. The next step is to get a conceptual understanding of what the team and company do. I think the difference between junior and seniors will be that this conceptual understanding will take much more time with juniors. But to answer your question, I think that the onboarding steps will be very close to the same for both juniors and seniors. The difference will be that the seniors should onboard more quickly because they can fast forward through a lot of the conceptual learning. Which brings me to today's sponsor. Sponsor, brilliant.org. When you're trying to gain a conceptual understanding, it's important to interact with what you're trying to learn. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, science, and computer science interactively. Passive reading or watching videos is probably the worst way to learn something. It gives you a false sense that you understand things deeply. If you don't know how neural networks work, it might be overwhelming and difficult to know where to start. With Brilliant, you can start from square one and learn visually. You can draw figures on the screen and actually see the network and activations light up. You can also interact with the weights and observe the effect on the sigmoid function. Brilliant has lessons on everything with new ones added every month. I'm currently brushing up on my skills with a course on random variables and distributions. It's been like 20 years since I've been in college, so this course has been really great. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineered or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. If you've enjoyed today's office hours, here's a link to my previous sessions. If you have a question you'd like answered, leave it in the comment section below. I hope you have an excellent day.